Production funding for Making It Up North is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I decided on my own style and I'm sticking with that. You want to be ambassador kind of for Minnesota. You want to give them that experience that they, that they wanted. All wood has energy, and just because it's old, because it doesn't have a use, or you don't think it has a use, or it doesn't fit your use, it still has energy, it still was energy, and you should still at least see if you can pass that on or repurpose it into something. Today we're on Saxon Bog, right on Admiral Road, with the beautiful sun coming up. So a lot of times we get the great gray owls coming in right down this road. We've had a boreal owl over here for the past couple weeks that comes and eats the little voles and stuff that are trying to get the seed. That's what I was really hoping for this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Just a great grave down, but did you? Mm -hmm. Is it still there? He no, he flew across and he flew a little deeper on this east side. So, All right. But he oh. was nicely positioned down there. Maybe he's coming this way. Hope so. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, we have red squirrels here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we have a number of different woodpeckers in here right now. There's a really big hairy woodpecker up there. And I don't see our friend the boreal owl yet. That would be high on my list. It's a nice variety of birds though this morning. Oh yeah, so this is uh, Admiral Road in Sac Zimbog and this is the Admiral Road feeding station where anybody can bring seed or peanut butter or whatever you want and we get a nice variety of birds coming in like today we had the downy woodpecker the hairy woodpecker gray jays so, and it's a great place to practice your photography if you want to learn how to stop that action this is a great place to do it <laughs> wow that was pretty neat. Could have landed right here. That would have been even better. <laughs> when I'm looking at the back of the camera, I'm just looking at my histogram. And then I'll zoom in to see if the eyeball is sharp. It really just makes you feel part of nature, even though it's a man-created feeding station to bring the birds in. It just makes you feel part of their little world. My name is Heidi Pinkerton, photographer and the owner of Root River Photography. You know, I, I run it like a business, so my hours are about 7 till noon in the office every day, and then I'll try to get out in the afternoon and do some shooting if I can. Sometimes I swap it around if I don't have anything to do. 92% of my business is photographing northern lights. Is Northern lights is what sells for me. I can't really sell a grizzly bear to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is to photograph northern lights over a lake because I like to see the reflection. And I don't like to see the reflection of the stars because it gets blurry because the water's moving. So oftentimes when I process my pictures, I'll take out those little stars <laughs> that are in the lake. Seriously, because that's just a style that I don't care for. I have a picture of chickadee with um, its breath. It was minus 32 degrees when I took the picture. The sun was rising behind it. Still in my pajamas, you know, at 6.30 in the morning. And I got the picture of the chickadee's breath coming out. I divide my year off by how I'm going to make my living. So in the winter months, I'm teaching classes at the International Wolf Center. I come here and do some guiding. I bring students over here.
And this is the time of the year that I then generate my products for this next coming year. So I'll be um, creating calendars that have my pictures on. I'm working with a local toy company and we're doing jigsaw puzzles. Um, so there's a whole bunch of new things that I have coming down the line and increasing what I already have in stock. I do jewelry. You know, you can put a picture on your wall only so many times and then you can put it in a book so many times, but now I have wearable art, right? So to actually be able to wear a piece of, you know, something that I created the photo of on a beautiful little piece of art itself, it just has a little bit more meaning to me. Come on, Josie! Ha ha ha! So one of the best parts about Josie she's learned that we love to take pictures. Ready? Come on. Run, run, run. What a good girl. Are you my travel buddy? I love it. <laughs> I love that it gets me out into nature on a regular basis. I love that I go walking with my dog, even if I'm not carrying my camera, and I'm finding different things. I love that I sit on the ground as much as I did when I was a little kid. It may be harder to get up, but... <laughs> So it's stuff like that, you know, I'm still doing what makes me feel young and active at 51 years old. You know, everything looks like diamonds right now because the sun is coming in on this beautiful icy stems. I'll stop even if I take a picture with my phone, you know, and I'll stop and I'll take that picture just for that memory. I'll usually send it to my mom. they will be like, this is where I was this morning, you know, and that's what makes the world go around for me. The nice thing with these birds is, is once you find kind of location, they usually hang out most of the winter in the same area. So I can take someone last week, this week, next week, and say, you know, there he is, kind of a thing. I mean, not every time, but uh, once you know these birds a little bit, study these birds a little bit, you kind of know their ha habits and behaviors. And that's, that's what makes a good guide too, is just having that knowledge and just practice, 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 and a little bit of patience, yeah. <laughs> So we should, we might be able to see rough grouse here up on the birch and aspen trees, blue jay, gray jays, maybe a shrike along here. Let me see if he's still there before we get out. Yeah, he's still there. You see him, top of the tamarack tree there? It's a northern shrike. This is superb. I didn't, I wasn't expecting it either, yeah, which makes yeah. it, you know, twice as much. <laughs> so no sharp-tailed grouse at the moment. I make that clear up front right away that I don't guarantee anything. I just have to do that. I think everyone should do that. I don't want anyone to have any high expectations and then be disappointed after they travel this way. Well, it's always worth it, because even if you don't get what you're looking for, like um, maybe you want one species but you get something else, and if you have an open mind, then you're always going to be happy. Nice accommodating owl. I really enjoy just the excitement that, that they show when they see their first bird, and they keep track of their life birds. It's the first time seeing a hawk owl or a great gray owl, that's a life bird, and so it's always, oh, it's always kind of fun. I think it would have to be the hawk owl yesterday, because we'd seen one the day before, but it was distant. I mean, yeah, I took well, several pictures, because I'd never seen one before. But it was a case of, it was a record shot. Yeah, I've seen one, this is what it looks like. But yesterday we got one closer, and the light wasn't perfect, but then it flew across to the right side of the street, road, and then he was sitting in beautiful light. So Zaxon Bog is about 300 square miles of mostly black spruce tamarack habitat. You have farmland here, you have agriculture here, you have the hay fields here, you have mixed forest here, and that, but most of it is the black spruce tamarack bog and that's what really attracts all these different birds here because the, there's a food source here. We live in Virginia Beach in Virginia. Well, we're retired and I'm a travel holic and I like to go all over the world taking pictures of wildlife 
And about two years ago, I read up about this and I said, oh, we've got to do that. I plan like a, a year or two years in advance. <laughs> As soon as seats become available on the on the aircraft, you know, seat assignment, she's already ready to book the plane. So uh, if you book in advance, so you, you get a go good a guide too. Yeah. I mean, there may be three guides up here, but you know, do your research and and you know who you want. And so if you book well in advance, then you got first yeah, choice. Uh, my name is Judd Brink, owner and guide for Minnesota Backyard Birds. I've been uh, feeding and watching birds for over 30 years now. I kind of started in my, in my backyard, um, filling up the bird feeders. I went to Friends of Sex and Bug, and they listed three. And I, I just looked at his, and, and he, he does birdscaping as well. And I thought, hmm, he's really into this. So instead of landscaping, I do birdscaping. So I help people attract birds to their own properties with, with um, feeders and native plantings. I call them songbird sanctuaries. So I work with a lot of uh, nursing homes and private homes in the area. Um, and I come out and design a plan for them you know, with feeders and different native plantings. And then I install them and I also have a service contract. I come out and maintain the feeders for everybody too. So I clean them, refill them. Especially this time of year, you know, remove the snow and ice, make sure the birds have access to the feeders, which is really, really critical. So I do that year round. Do more guiding in the winter time just because of the birds. So I have like two seasons. It's, it's really, it, it works out wonderful. I'm not that that much of a wildlife person, but you know, mm -hmm. you really begin to appreciate things. Guess who's come to visit? Yeah. The hawk oh, there's your, there's your hawk yeah. Right on cue. Excuse right on me? cue. Yeah. <laughs> Judd's got him contracted for this this time of the day. <laughs> oh yeah, he's lovely. Oh, and he's looking. Hello. <laughs> well done, Judd. <laughs> for me, I've been getting up here for a number of years now, and it's it's I've met some wonderful people from around the country and around the world that they come here. There's a bond because we're here for a common purpose, but then you just get chatting and, and met fantastic people. It's just really good. This place is a destination for, for many, many people. I just have the opportunity to, to show people the birds and it's just, it's been wonderful. I firmly believe that, um, like all wood has energy, everything in this life has energy. When we want to just dismiss that, and like even if it's an end table or an old um, TV cabinet, all this wood can have a rebirth, and you're not doing that wood justice by just throwing it away. So there was this dresser. Okay, so this is like the cool stuff you don't see. Well, here, way inside, it was, it was patented in 1902, built in 1907. There's care and detail that goes into each one and then for each person. So that's the cool stuff. Like I, I just, I jones on that thing. So damn goods and gear is what we're called, myself and my partner, Katie. I had done this for a while, just out of the garage, and we finally said, you know, like, let's, Let's pay Uncle Sam, let's do this like legit, let's put, hang the sign on the door. And then it was like, what are we gonna call it? The first one she came up with was damn good gear. Because obviously you're like, oh, this is a great idea. This is a million dollar idea. So I'm like, Google that. So I'm driving and she's like, you know, God love the internet. And uh, she's like, oh no, that's already taken. So um, we came up with damn goods and gear. That's how it was born. Just said, you know, we're just gonna try it, do it, and here we are, like four years, five years later. I make snowshoes, canoe paddles, stand-up paddleboard paddles, custom fishing rods, landing nets. 
So this is gonna be, uh, we're doing kind of a mashup, if you will. He's a little older and he'd like a waiting staff, but he wants to have a net on the end of it, like a dual purpose. Uh, so we're kind of creating a one-off piece, which is kind of our jam. This is parts and pieces for that. My business plan is bad, uh, but I like it. My business plan is I have zero inventory. Uh, I don't want to create a product for somebody to buy off a shelf because they like my name, they like my brand, or they like the way that the one that their neighbor had. And no offense to anybody, but that's not who I'm making this for. I'm making this for the people that make the conscious decision that I want something that has a purpose, came from something, and then when I do sell the wood products, like the stories of the wood go with them. So this actually came from like a boat ramp dock in cotton. Anybody that's got an old junky deck that they think's redwood, give me a call. <laughs> Just because it's it's such beautiful wood and it such has a, such a rich heritage. Currently, I work for the city of Duluth also on my day job. I give that place 110% and I come home and I give this place 110%. I need health insurance, everybody needs health insurance. Um, and uh, so I, I work and do a thing uh, during the day that provides me with um, uh, health insurance and I provide them with a service. And then at a certain point, um, I just want to write my own story. Everything is very relevant in this world. So when I talk about energy in trees and how, how people can just like dismiss that, that translates over to how I used to be as a human being. I obviously had predetermined notions of Native Americans and First Nations folk. got to a point where when we were in Alaska for the Iditarod, there was a guy passed out on the sidewalk. And it was cold, I mean, it was like 15 below. And, uh, and the guy I was staying with, we like stepped over him. And I remember, I was just like, why are we, like, I asked him like, why didn't, are we gonna help him? Or like call somebody? And the guy's like, oh no, that's so-and-so. Like, he's just a drunk. And they walked off and I just remember like, well, that's what I would say. Like, that's what, that's what this stupid bigot would say about that guy on the ground, but you're saying it? Like, no, wait a second. It just opened my eyes and that like started the probably two or, yes, that would have been like a three year process of finding myself personally. I tore myself down and built myself back up to a point where I'm very comfortable talking about it and like very open about it. So like the hardest part with reclaimed wood that really kind of sucks is you don't want to sand it too far because you lose all that beautiful patina, but you got to sand it far enough so that somebody don't get a dang sliver in their hand. My property here has been in my family since the early 1900s. I always pay homage to that. I pay homage to my family and then I also pay homage to the people that originally watched over this land. That energy helps me put forth products that I put out. Oh, social media. So I didn't really believe in social media. You know, I just was, I'm just going to do my thing and, uh, you know, people will find me. And uh, so I went to a few business classes and uh, tried to get some business help. And what do you do for uh, like brand awareness? And I was like, we have a website. And they're like, oh, well, you're never going to go anywhere. So here we are, Facebook, damn goods and gear, Facebook, damn goods and gear, Instagram, and I'm like, okay, that's all I can do. And honestly, oh, you should just believe people sometimes. I hate throwaway culture. It drives me bonkers. Like, I don't need to make a ton of money. I just want to make quality stuff so when people pay $200, it's not like, oh, I paid 200 bucks for it, you know, fix it. Oh, I just need to buy a new one. Like, no. Success for me is independent wealth. Independent wealth for me is, can I feed myself? Can I feed my partner? 
Katie, can we feed our chickens and our dogs? And am I able to go on these crazy fishing adventures? Okay, if I can afford that, I'm a rich man. You know, there's a lot of people out there trying to do photography and I think it's great. A lot of hobbyists, but a lot of people really do want to make some money on it and you can. You know, you just have to think about it like a business. Look at you. Excellent. Well, I think you gotta be passionate what you're doing. You gotta, you gotta know your birds a little bit tell a little story along the way and, and it's just really, really fun. I'm not looking to make a million bucks. I'm just looking to create like one-off products that like people are mindful of and want to do and if that can give me some financial freedom in any way, great. And if it doesn't and I still get to do it, I'm good with that too.